Okay, it's time to look at directing basic dialogue, music, and sound effects. In other words, the audio that movies can handle. I've classed this video lesson as easy, because although we've got a lot to get through, the concepts and the execution is actually quite simple. Over in Movie Zoo, let me show you what I've got. I've got a very simple set. I've got a guy, a camera, and that's pretty much it. Into this set, I'm going to give this guy some dialogue. I'm going to give him some sound effects. I'm going to put some background music into the scene. And I'm going to show you how you control lip syncing and how you can mix and edit the whole thing together to give you a soundtrack to your animated movie. Okay, so from the top, directing audio is a two-step process, just like everything else. First of all, you have to prepare it. Um, and then you go on and direct it. Preparing it, you've got two choices, dialogue or audio. In actual fact, audio has got sound effects and music embedded in it. But the first thing we're going to do is prepare dialogue. Now, this little box comes up. There's lots of different ways that you can get sound into MovieZoo. Um, you can use the sound effects that come shipped and boxed with MovieZoo. Or you can record from a microphone by hitting this button right here. That will pop up uh, this little window which will allow you to record from a mic if you so wish. Or the other way to do it is you can import files. And that's about what we're going to do in this one. So we're going to hit import, not Michael Caine, open it. This is a piece of audio that was supplied uh, uh, by Drico, one of our users. So thanks to Drico for this. Um, let's see, so we've got not Michael Caine, WAV. MovieZoo can do WAVs or MP3s. Incidentally, and I'm going to turn the volume of this down a little bit just because I know it's quite a loud sort of sound. So I'm going to take it down to about there. 16 seconds long. This is a little movie zoo tip for you. Never have anything starting at time zero, it's always best to offset it. Gives you a little sort of lead in time, a little run in time. So I'm going to offset it by two seconds. Let's listen to what we've got going on here. So, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you throw that stick one more time, I will bite you so hard that your arm will come clean off. And that's it. I could stop the audio at any point with this button. The big X deletes it. My choice of audio was um, deliberate. What I've got is I've got dialogue, but it's messy dialogue. It's sitting over a kind of background clutter that you'd hear in a coffee shop. And I did that deliberately because I want to show you how you get the lip syncing to just focus on the dialogue and not worry about moving the mouth uh, when it hears background sounds. So once you've got your sound file into MovieZoo, the next tab that you need to visit is the talking one right here. Now we've only got one character. If you had more than one character, there would be a little bit more. There would be more buttons here. But right now we've only got one character. And we can set them to either talk or shush as an initial state. Well, I happen to know that the first thing in this audio track that kicks in is the background audio. So from the from the from the outset, I don't want this character to be lip syncing to the background of the coffee shop. So I want him to be initially shushed, and then I'll cause him to talk when we get to the direct stage. Okay, that's the preparation done. Let's go to direct dialogue. Change my point of view slightly. So this is going to be quite easy. I just hit the record button, and when I want the character to talk. I click this button. When I want them to be quiet, I click this button. Let's give it a go. So, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you throw that stick one more time, I will bite you so hard that your arm will come clean off. Okay, so that was the first pass. We hit record, we went straight through, and I hit. I attempted to hit talk when I wanted the character to lip sync, and shush when I wanted the character to be quiet. I won't have got it accurately first time, but that's okay, we've got the timeline editor to tweak when those changes happen. Before we do that, let's let's add a little bit of um a little bit of audio as well. Let's go back to prepare, and this time go down to audio. So this is where we can add background music and sound effects. Sound effects are represented by this little panel up here and the background audio is represented by these three buttons right here. Think of these as slots into which you can load three different pieces of background music or if you like nine sound effects. The sound effects that you see preloaded here come with MovieZoo. We don't provide you with any background music that's why these are empty. 
So the first thing we're going to do is some background music. Let's click on a slot, an unnamed slot. I can choose here, I can go in and pick one of these ones, but again, I'm going to import. And it's this one right here, which I got from freesound.org. Let's have a listen to it. It's just kind of moody piano music. But I do want to make it quieter. Probably down about, probably down about there. And again, I want to offset it so it matches up with everything else by two seconds. And hit OK. You can see that's now loaded in there. So let's go and hear what that sounds like. Let's go to. Oh, in fact, let's not do that. Let's do some sound effects first of all. Um, what are we going to put in? We can use any of these ones right here, or at the prepare audio stage we can load our own. So let's take this first one right here. And again, we could record from microphone, or we could import a sound, but right now I'm going to go use the chooser. These are all the ones that come with MovieZoo. Creatures. That what we'll do. We'll have Alien Creature 1. Okay, that. Bit of a sort of random sound, but uh, it just makes a point. Right. We've prepared our audio. Let's go and direct it. Now the background music is going to happen just because it always does happen. You don't actually have buttons to trigger it. But the alien creature does live in this button now. So I'm going to hit record and I'm going to hit the alien creature noise when I want it to happen. So, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you throw that stick one more time, I will bite you so hard that your arm will come clean off. There we go. So just to recap what you heard there, you heard that the piece of music, the piano music, which I imported and set to start after two seconds, it was playing fine. And I waited to the very end of the piece before I triggered the alien creature noise. Let's go and see what that looks like in the timeline. So here's what we've got. Just zoom out a little bit. Okay, this is me looking at the entire animation right here. We can see that Ian starts off quiet, talks, goes quiet, talks and goes quiet again. The dialogue starts at two seconds and plays for the entire duration. Then we've got the piano music starts at two seconds and plays till its end. And then we've got the alien sound effect right here. I'm going to pull the alien sound effect in to happen right at the end of the piano music. I also want to, lis to listen to the start of this dialogue because I don't think I got this initial talking portion right. So let's rewind and press play. So, yeah, this is uh, this is not in the right place. You can see that the lip syncing happens at the wrong time. So, comes in too early. In an actual fact, I probably want it to be about there. I also want this to be about there. And that'll be about there. So, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you throw that stick... So there we've got much better lip sync. And if you wanted more control, of course we could zoom in. And see if we got that spot on. So, I'd say that's pretty good. Zoom back out again. Now if we weren't happy with any of these settings we could of course use a little bin icon right here to delete all the events in a track but I am happy with these things so I'm going to leave them as they are the last thing I want to do is remember that junk time that I put right at the start I made everything offset by two seconds I can remove it at this stage I can set my start marker to start at say 1.75 seconds and I can set my end marker actually I'm happy with it sitting about there OK, so let's close down the timeline. Let's go to Video, Make Video. And we'll just go ahead and make this video. Click this button and save it as Not Michael Kane Vid. And Movies is going to go ahead and render this stuff off. Now remember when you're doing sound work, or in fact when you're burning any sort of video from Movies, you don't actually hear the sound as it's making it but you can see that everything else is happening. This is not going to take long. And once it's made the video, we'll go and find it and, uh, and play it. 
Okay, that's it. Complete. Let's OK that. Okay, let's go and see what we've got. Open right here. Let's press play. So, I'll tell you this for nothing. If you throw that stick one more time, I will bite you so hard that your arm will come clean off. And it's as simple as that. Now, if I had more time, I would inevitably go in and do that talking and shushing pass again because he there are points where it's lip syncing to the coffee shop noises but i'm happy with that it demonstrates the principle and it should set you up for some more advanced dialogue techniques